Watch out, Marvel DC's The Batman is fast approaching, and it might just take a piece of the action. I'm Batman. Hey guys, welcome back to The Binger. Superhero movies have never been hotter, but Marvel still reigns supreme. We're the Avengers, man. Could Matt Reeves' The Batman be ready to change the game? Let's take a look at everything we know about the movie, including the ins and outs of Batman's new suit. The question on everyone's lips is, what is the new suit gonna look like? Every good comic book hero has to evolve with the times, that's just the way it goes. Audiences don't want something that's a cookie cutter replica of everything they've already seen. We've had a fair few actors try their hand at doing Batman justice, each with their own all black getup. Remember Val Kilmer's ab written suit, George Clooney's super pointy ears, and Christian Bale's military esque cut? They were all iconic in their own way. Oh, and lest we forget Adam West's original garb that was less about the armor and more about the underpants and tights. The last time we saw that deep and mysterious hero was back in 2017. This costume was different in a much bigger way than we saw previously. Incorporating shades of gray, it appeared more like a concrete shell than a super cool impervious to harm number. A lot of fans thought it was just plain weird and far too away from the sleek lines and ebony tones that scream Batman. This leaves the game wide open for the next installment. As of this moment, we don't know a whole lot about what it's going to look like. However, We Got This Covered claimed to have gotten their devious mitts on very early designs of Batman's cowl. If the picture is to be believed, then we can expect a return to a more classic look for Gotham's savior. The lines look hard and pointed while the eyes look narrow. Maybe that's so Batman can shoot a mean side eye at his enemy. We have yet to see the full suit, but going by what we know, we can draw a few assumptions. Affleck's number didn't go down well with the fans, so expect a welcome return to black. New gadgets and gizmos are a must-have accessory for any crime-fighting Lothario, so we'll be dazzled by shiny new tech too. As for the infamous abs, they're as much of a part of Bruce Wayne as his tortured scowl and huge bank balance. You can bet your bottom dollar that they'll be emphasized in all of their chiseled glory. When Affleck first emerged as Batman, the fandom was not happy. Not many people could imagine the 40-something star having the specific skills required to give that role what it needs. Despite all the skepticism in the lead up to Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice, his performance was largely praised. Critics thought that he brought an emotional side to the character that hadn't been explored previously. It wasn't enough to win the fandom over entirely, who remained split on the issue. Affleck reprised his role in Suicide Squad and finally in 2017's Justice League. Initially, he was pegged to star in the 2021 standalone movie, but he couldn't make it work. Talking to Jimmy Kimmel in 2019, Affleck said that he tried to direct the version as well as star in it, but it simply wasn't working. I couldn't crack it, he admitted. I thought it was time to let someone else take a shot at it. Considering the fame and fortune that comes with starring in one of these movies, it's a testament to Affleck that he bowed out. Cue a stream of potentials that were eager to take on the part. Jake Gyllenhaal put his hat in the ring, but it was eventually narrowed down to two. Nicholas Holt, who plays Beast in the MCU's X-Men, and everyone's favorite vampire, Robert Pattinson. Both British actors came close, but it was eventually confirmed that Pattinson won the role. After finding success in the Twilight franchise as Edward Cullen, Pattinson garnered a very particular fan base. Perhaps eager to shed that teen heartthrob image, he retreated from mainstream cinema for a few years. He certainly has the jawline for the part, but does Pattinson have the chops? The jury is still out, but let's hope he can pull something out of the bag. Given the hype surrounding this movie, it's unlikely that he would have been cast if he couldn't do Bruce Wayne justice. Although someone did cast George Clooney, and that didn't exactly end well. Batman has always been a brooding, interesting character, but each actor has made it their own. Val Kilmer was detached and aloof, Michael Keaton was interesting to say the least, and George Clooney, well, uh, he publicly apologizes for taking the part every chance he can get. What does that tell you? Christian Bale may be the most popular Dark Knight by far, but alas, he's gone. Now we know we've got Robert Pattinson at the helm, but there's a lot of gossip about what kind of Batman he'll be. Reeves has described the movie as noir, indicating that we'll see more of Batman's detective skills. After all, he is just a physically capable human in a suit. He doesn't have much in the way of superpowers. Reeves has also said that he would like to make a trilogy. He's a dab hand at this, but how would it work with Batman? As Pattinson is now 33, there's quite a lot of scope. That's a good age to be playing both a man in his 20s and as the years tick by, a slightly older Bat, too. We'd put our money on the character's personality being explored in a deeper way than we've previously seen. We already know that Pattinson can play deep and mysterious thanks to Twilight. 
His role as a hopelessly in love vamp may have been a little too tween friendly for our liking, but it worked. If you can get into that niche and make it work, then Batman should be a breeze. Batman's list of foes is almost as long as the people who've nearly played the role over the years. He's a scourge of Batman City's underworld, the Dark Knight, the one who spoils all the fun. There are plenty of people that want him gone, as we've seen in previous movies. When Ben Affleck was working on his version of the Batman, he indicated that multiple bad guys would appear. This idea is quite appealing, seeing as there's a lot of ground to cover and a lot of great villains that deserve screen time. Some speculated that it would be set in Arkham Asylum, where Batman would fight his way through numerous nasties. To hardcore fans, that sounds like chaotic heaven. Arkham Asylum needs more attention, and that could be the perfect way to do it. These ideas were both tied to Affleck, though, so once he went, they went. That's not to say that the new director, Matt Reeves, won't come up with something equally as thrilling, though. He's being tight-lipped about a lot of things regarding the plot of the movie, but Reeves did say one thing. He confirmed that we can expect to see multiple bad guys. We just don't know who. Some reports suggest that Penguin, Catwoman, and Riddler would crop up. These are worthy villains, but they have been featured in Batman movies previously. Wouldn't it be nice to get something new and fresh into the mix? Plus, Danny DeVito did such a good job as Oswald Cobblepot that it might be hard to follow. Any superhero movie worth its salt needs a good combination of thrills, tension, and humor. Prior to the MCU blowing up and taking off, Batman and Superman were the frontrunners of the movie world. That can make it fairly difficult to create something new. There have been seven Batman movies so far, but luckily makers have a wealth of storylines to inspire them. This is DC's big chance to relaunch one of the best-loved heroes in the world. They need to grip it with both hands if they want to get on par with Marvel's cinematic presence. It's been reported that Frank Miller's Batman Year One has definitely been ruled out. Among some of the more favorable choices is Hush, where a shady new bad guy gets all of Batman's enemies together. Nightfall sees the Bat get pretty much snapped in half by Bane. This would put Bruce Wayne into a position more vulnerable than we've seen him previously as he struggles to get back into health. Then there's also Arkham Origins, the video game that pits Batman against a bunch of worthy foes. He only has a single evening to battle his way out. However, seeing as this is a fairly recent work, it's probably unlikely that this is the route Reeves will go down. What's the point in writing something new if it's already been made into a video game? That takes out a whole lot of merchandising revenue. Regardless of whether Reeves decides to take a leaf out of the comic book or come up with an original concept, it needs to be great. There's a lot of pressure on him, but he did pull it out of the bag with his recent Planet of the Apes movies. Hopefully he's got a few tricks left up his sleeve. By this point, we're all quite used to how Marvel works. Every movie is connected in some way, but what about the DCEU? Is the Batman going to be in a continuation of what we've seen so far? The answer is probably not. Unlike the MCU, DC is still trying to find their footing. Unfortunately, they've had more failures than successes. Suicide Squad and Justice League tanked, giving their collective hero efforts a bad name. They have had more luck with Wonder Woman and Aquaman, so it's highly likely the Batman will be a standalone story. So far, connecting these dots just hasn't paid off for DC. These characters can work excellently by themselves though, which is a blessing. Robert Pattinson is also a great deal younger than Affleck. We can only assume that we'll be coming in at a different period of the Dark Knight's life. What's more, ditching all of the connections to past works gives Reeves free reign. He won't have to worry about staying true to certain events. Instead, he'll be free to focus on what matters most, the story. Is it a little sad that we won't be getting a linear timeline? In some ways, absolutely. We've grown accustomed to that with the MCU, but the DCEU is its own animal. Maybe it's this uniqueness that will help it out in the long run. <laughs> Lord knows the comic giants need a break in this area. Now that they've got their main man, there's only one thing left to do. Start filming the darn thing. Even before casting was announced, Warner Brothers confirmed that the Batman will hit theaters in 2021. June 25th is the magical date to put on your calendars. It's a little bit of a wait, but come on, they need to get this right. Production is pegged to start at the end of 2019 or the start of 2021, so they'll be on a tight schedule. Apart from Reeves and Pattinson, little is known about the rest of the cast and crew. According to the IMDb page, James Chinland is in charge of the production design, while Sam Michlap is heading the art department. When Affleck was at the helm, he hired Magic Mike's Joe Manganiello to play Deathstroke. 
It's unclear whether he's still going to be appearing in this version of the movie. The True Blood actor would have been a great choice for the role. Let's hope that he's been kept as it would have been such a shame to see him go. Regardless of when it's released, it's highly likely that the Batman will be a big commercial hit. With all the hype surrounding it, avid fans are going to pour into the theaters. That means only one thing, mega bucks. Are you as excited about this as we are? Sound off below. Before you go, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit subscribe either so you stay up to date with us here at The Binger. Until next time, thanks for watching.